That's right here. First, I just have to mention that your description of all theropods there was massively wrong. So you might want to check into that. But my question is, um, specifically, you had attacked naturalism as a methodology for science at the end of your discussion. If we have this, whether you want to use the word or not, godlike designer out there, why do you limit your attack on naturalism just to biology? Why doesn't the Discovery Institute, when they're studying traffic in Seattle, look for an intelligent designer causing traffic jams? Or my accountant, why, where is this intelligent designer in every other field of endeavor? Well, I think the Discovery Institute is advocating intelligent design of traffic, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not, not very successfully so far, but uh, Seattle has a terrible problem. And actually, the largest project at Discovery Institute is working on that. But uh, your, your question is legitimate. Uh, and uh, I would say that uh, science, some people say science is limited to testing natural explanations which is actually a limit on science, which leaves beyond science all those other things that may in fact be real, but science can't get at with its methods. Mr. Shermer in his book did not define science as a limit on method, but a limit on reality. There is no supernatural. Once you adopt that definition of science, you're actually using applied materialistic philosophy to explain the world. And the evidence, ultimately, is just window dressing. And that's my complaint with Darwinism, because I see Darwinism doing that. But that wasn't my question. I got off on the traffic, I guess. <laughs> what? Repeat your question, maybe? Where is the designer in every other field of human endeavor? What else is he doing or did doing? Well, I, I would say we'd have to take it case by case. Uh, actually, intelligent design is not limited to biology. Uh, there's a book called The Privileged Planet that Discovery Institute uh, fellows put out, uh, arguing that the cosmos is designed. And it gives uh, lengthy arguments and evidence for that. Uh, so it's not limited to biology. Uh, maybe traffic in Seattle could use some intelligent design. At this point, I would say there's not much evidence for it. Right there. Yeah. My name is Philip Collier. I'm a freelance writer, and like your moderator, I do not have a PhD. Um, one thing I was thinking about, and this seems to me a difficulty. Speak with, up a little. This seems to be a difficulty with intelligent design. It would be this: I would like to propose my own intelligent design theory, which is the entire universe and everything we have was created one month ago, and all our memories and all our books and everything we read and everything we know was created one month ago. And if I started an institute, I could call it the One Month Ago Institute, and I have to call it the Two Month Ago Institute Month. I would say that the thing about my theory is that I think it's a reasonably valid theory, but the thing about it, which I say it is not scientific, is if a bunch of people believe this like I propose to do, how could you prove us wrong? What evidence facts could you show us could prove us wrong? It seems to me the fundamental thesis for any scientific theory is they would posit something and say, well, if you can show this, that's why it's wrong. And I would ask Mr. Wells, what facts or evidence would prove you wrong and if they w would not if you can't think of anything to prove you wrong can you tell me what would prove my design theory wrong well in fact uh, intelligent design in a given case can be proven wrong uh, the work of William Dembski one of the the main uh, theorists in intelligent design uh, is that we basically operate in our daily lives using three modes of explanation. One is we can attribute something to natural law, natural regularities, the formation of a crystal, the, uh, the ripples of, of, of sand in, in the sand on the beach or something. Another mode of explanation is chance. Some things happen by chance, you know, the particular outcome of a, a roll of the dice or a roulette wheel. And a third mode of explanation that we all use in our daily lives, sometimes unconsciously, is design. We infer that something occurred intentionally, deliberately, uh, by an intelligent agent. Now, according to Dembski and other design theorists, we can use those three modes of explanation to account for things in the world of nature as well. Uh, design, the design inference can be defeated if, in fact, you can show that something was produced by natural law or some combination of law and chance. That defeats the design inference, and you do that with evidence. Okay, over there and then over here. Go ahead and bring another microphone down to right here. 
My name is Bob Levy. I want to explore one area in which all three of you seem to agree, and that is if we had a totally private education system that would sort all of this out. Parents could decide where to send their children. Schools could decide whether to teach intelligence design or, or evolution. So is it the position of all three of you that the state should have no role whatsoever in determining what constitutes a, uh, an education? Or if you're prepared to make compromises in that regard, and for example, prevent madrasas from teaching terrorism, then where do we draw the line? Don't we also have the problem that you are debating in a totally private educational system? Wow. <laughs> in, in two minutes or less. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, at, at the very least, school choice would be a nice start. You leave the public schools there for a while. I mean, we're not going to just dismantle them overnight. So at least let parents choose. And, and even home, well, some do with homeschooling, but, but more choice than that. I, I wrote a book on libertarianism, so I guess I think that uh, the schools ought to be private. And I'm, and I'm not sure that I think your point applies here. I think there might be a case that, look, our society, even in private schools, is not going to allow the teaching of hatred and incitement to violence. But good and bad science, whichever is which, it seems to me there's not a case for government involvement. Jonathan? Let me just add that uh, I, I think the debates we're having here about the science, about Darwinism and intelligent design, will and should continue, uh, private or public schools. But what bothers me right now as a taxpayer is that the polls consistently show that about 80 to 90 percent of the American people do not accept Darwinian evolution as I defined it. That is, uh, unguided natural process produce everything that we see. And yet, so that's only 10 to 15 percent, actually, of the, pop, of the population believe in Darwinism. And yet the 80 to 85 percent, if it will, of the public who don't accept it are forced to pay for it to have a monopoly in the public school system. It's that taxpayer-supported monopoly that bothers me. Right here. Tom? It should be. Uh, um, I'd like to ask Michael Schirmer, um, how he would answer the question that was just asked about falsifying a theory. Falsify how can Darwinism be shown to be false? It seems to me that if you have a philosophy, a materialist philosophy, as I believe you do, materials, atoms and molecules in motion is all that exist. The fact is that, you know, organisms do exist, we do exist, so we got here somehow, so we ha they had to have whirled themselves into, ex into bats and bees and all the rest of us. So you don't need any you don't need any evidence for evolution once you have that philosophy it's just simply a logical deduction from your philosophy so what it, can you imagine anything being discovered that would in fact result in your saying well Darwinism can't be true in that case fossil trilobites in hominid bedding planes <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't disprove it the, the conclusion would be that the trilobites actually survived all those millions of years, but they just didn't leave. No, but, but, but based on the current uh, uh, understanding, this would be a serious problem. T evolution is quite testable. It's tested all the time. That's uh, sort of a, a one-off liner uh, answer, but, but the equivalent of that goes on all the time, every day in labs. That's what they're doing. Okay, I'm going to call this to a halt so we can go have lunch and buy books. Um, I want to thank Dr. Jonathan Wells for talking about his book, The Politically Incorrect Guide to Darwinism, and Dr. Michael Shermer for talking about his book, Why Darwin Matters. Thank you all for being here. Please thank our Thank you.